Welcome to Wings Over Springs 2022. This event is put on by the Holly Springs Skyhawks, one of the clubs local to the Raleigh area of North Carolina. We consider the club to be friendly people and often refer new pilots to them to learn how to fly on their own. Today, we're going over the annual Wings Over Springs event. If you are unfortunate enough to get stuck in that tree there, uh, we do have a tree topper award, see? I'm not kidding, it's a tree topper award and you can, you can put that proudly on your desk and tell all your friends about it. And if you hit that flagpole, you'll get the uh, pole dancer award. And uh, this has a, uh, basically the, the, uh, the aircraft can spin around the pole here. So, you remember my see that? Rio? We got that going on, so it's a little, uh, <laughs> you like a fidget spinner for your desk. All right? So good luck today. Fly safe. Not much. The drugs are finally kicking in. At this point, I'm still recovering from coronavirus. I needed DayQuil to get through the day without hacking up a lung. Wings Over Springs is an event benefiting Meg's Smile Foundation, a charity that provides gifts and fun days to children affected by serious illnesses who are treated in North Carolina hospitals. It's a worthy cause, and we hope you consider donating via megsmile.org. I went up and got in some raptor practice. Looking locked in which I figured I would sorely need to fly at the noon demo. Having COVID knocked out all of my practice days for a full week, leaving me pretty unprepared for this event. I figured that I understood the field layout well enough to go back up with some other models, so I took the Raptor back down to prepare for the next flight. You saw this huge turbine jet in the beginning. It ended up closing out the noontime demos. More on that soon. We actually got to see a Timber 110. This is unfortunately one of many models that Horizon Hobby discontinued in the ever-shrinking Hangar 9 brand. We always wanted one of these. It was good to get to see it fly. This model has a 9-foot wingspan. It's massive. It dwarfs even the Carbon Z Cub SS. We hope Horizon brings it back at some point. Timbers are one of the most fun airframes to fly, and we're sad that we missed out on a chance to own a giant scale version. Thanks again for coming out and supporting this great event. We had to bring the Viper out. It's been a long time since we've flown it off grass, and it was time to really highlight how much of an amazing aerobat this model is to a brand new crowd who's never seen it fly before and, of course, to showcase its high alpha potential. It's also very awesome to watch when performing aggressive loaded rolls. The airframe just slips through the air, just like the Viper slips through the gap between the pine tree and the flagpole. We also brought out the EC-1500. This is unfortunately another discontinued Horizon Hobby model, so if it goes down, we either repair it or we're out of luck. As Tony likes to say, 
Fly good. Don't suck. It flies better now that the prop is in reverse. The kids love watching flat spins. I think it absolutely blows their minds. Unpowered, literally, see? <laughs> That's crazy. This plane is still the queen of Harriers. Even with the wind gusts that started to really pick up, the EC1500 was rock solid with the Harrier flap mix that I use, which causes all of the wing surfaces to flip up with elevator input. It really stabilizes the wing and it looks cool too. Just a little too much side slip coming in here, but otherwise, a good landing. <laughs> we got to see a ton of different models, even another EC1500. This Lazy Bee was an interesting sight. We don't see many of them. Personally, I think it looks like a flying school bus. I'm not sure what this model is, but it looks like it was designed as a float plane. Good thing it works well on grass, too. We even got to see a Hellcat, along with some helicopter shenanigans. Tony and I are terrified of helicopters, and with good reason. Always respect a spinning saw blade. Does anyone else find this reverse hovering to just be absolutely insane? It can't only be us. Let's get the Hornet up on a quick test flight and see how it performs before the fateful noon demos. It's funny, everything went fine here. It's unfortunate that I couldn't get that same luck during the demo performance coming up though. Well, she's in good shape. We thought this foam board biplane was pretty cool. A lot of work definitely went into it, but it only had lower wing ailerons, which seemed to reduce its roll agility potential. Unfortunately, the pilot managed to hit the flag with the landing gear, which led to a single wheel landing. And if I'm not mistaken, he actually won the Pole Dancer Award. This unfortunate fellow was performing some pretty amazing low-level high-speed passes with his Viper. On landing, the jet bounced eight feet into the air, then got caught by the wind and cartwheeled. Always go around instead of accepting a bad landing. It was around this point that I took the timber up and tried my best to get close to the flagpole without hitting it. 
A lot of pilots were afraid of flying too close to the flagpole, but we fly at an airport that's really constricted with space, so I'm used to this. I just started flying near it to help see if I could get people to feel more comfortable. And maybe just to show off just a little. Maybe just a tiny bit. Gotta do it, John. It's not really a timber flight for us without a knife edge spin. And some poor attempts at one-wheeled landings to see if I can pull off my friend Zach's maneuvers at Tail Heavy Productions. I definitely need more practice. Oh well. I even brought out the GoPro 10 to drop from the EC1500. It's been nearly a year since the last time we did this, and it gives a great overview of the size of the event from above. Unfortunately, I had to turn the volume down here to avoid copyright issues on YouTube. U2's Beautiful Day was playing during my routine, and I'm not terribly interested in having the entire vid's revenues go directly to the band just for a tiny segment that's playing here. I was definitely pushing my luck with the inverted low pass the announcer asked for, especially in these wins, but the jet handled it and the crowd loved it. Here. 
All right, America, get out of my way. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whoa, what the hell? What the hell happened there? Earlier in the day, the left stabilator servo arm had come loose. We think that a combination of the servo arms slipping off of the gear and the gyro in turbulent winds caused this. What a show, huh? You know, they're flying machines, so sometimes, you know, there's mishaps, so no one was uh, injured or hurt during that, uh, that maneuver there. I did too. No, he doesn't have it. <laughs> it happens. Switch it up. Flame was just like, you know what? I want a Cobra again. <laughs> Every time I teach a student to fly like RC, I always tell them when that I airplane leaves the ground, you're the I thought the wind the caught him. He kind of waggled. I expected him to kind of climb out. And then they were like, the plane, elevator it's changed. It's on the ground, in a tree, or it's flown away, and you can't that, see it anymore. The Hornet just wants to kill itself, man. I don't know what it is about that plane. I think it should just be nicknamed the Blue and Yellow Lawn Dart. Alright, that's point two. capable of very high alpha, very slow speed. Don practices these maneuvers a lot. This takes a, a bit of a skill to understand the aerodynamics of the model, but you can you know, enter these maneuvers with just the precise amount of airspeed to make them possible. If you're too fast, if you're too slow, it's either a failed maneuver or a crash. Holy sh that that or a crash, yeah. And a crash. And that's why we have a flight light. Sometimes you fly your plane right to where you park it. Okay. Well, that was certainly pilot error. Let's watch a more accomplished pilot flying a very expensive turbine that I narrowly missed. Very much counting my blessings that I didn't hit it. I love that Just smell. Just to be clear, this is not a park flyer aircraft. We do not fly the size airplane at our flying club. <laughs> but it's a treat for today. We really appreciate Jeff being able to make it this weekend. They give us a great demo.
We'd say it's a pretty good landing for a massive jet in a field it wasn't designed to fly from. It's not every day you get to see a giant scale turbine jet, especially one flown as well as this jet was. If you're ever in the area, come visit us for next year's Wings Over Springs, and please consider donating to Meg's Smile to help unfortunate children in need. See you guys on Saturday.